Hello everybody and welcome to my new animals tutorial for RimWorld. I'm Icon and this one is filled with tips and tricks to make your life easier with your critters. As usual, I have put timestamps in the description box. I've tried to organize these tips into certain, certain categories, so check them out or let the video flow as you like. It's up to you. I'm going to talk about various topics like how to tame really dangerous critters, how to get animals in a pen that are actually able to to use the attack command out of the pen and into the combat and various other things that might have boggled your mind in between. Now, let's get started and I want to start out with the whole taming uh, thing first. So, when you want to tame dangerous creatures, there's a couple of things that you really should keep in your mind. First off, you see here the revenge chance versus when harmed and uh, when tame fail. If there is even a 2% chance of tame of revenge on tame fail, take it seriously. First off, always ask yourself, would I be able to kill that thing if it goes against me? If the answer is yes, you can tame it. If the answer is no, you are already playing with fire if you're trying that. But to make the thing work easily, you can do a couple of safety precautions that make the whole thing easier. So if you want to tame a dangerous animal, let's take the wild goose here as an example. We have one here with a very, very high uh, revenge chance on taming. So let's drop our people and I'll give you an example here. So in this scenario, let's imagine the wild goose would be something like a mega sloth or a thrombo or a vicious dinosaur, whatever. You'll be assigning the taming command and you'll put up your main tamer onto the taming command and the people with the guns are standing right next to that situation. Ideally not behind your tamer but in a 90, per a 90 degree angle, so if you have friendly fire enabled, they don't shoot each other, and in, th in this scenario, if the taming fails, you're going to be shooting the animal down and your tamer can disengage. Also you'll risk a pretty low amount of wounds in that scenario. And if the taming is successful, wonderful. And the other thing there is, if you have to gun down the animal and it turns unconscious, you can just slap down a sleeping spot, rescue it, patch it up, and you have a fair chance of that critter joining your colony out of gratefulness or something like that. This is another cool method. If you don't want to even risk the life of your people, you can just gun down that thrombo until it falls unconscious and patch it up and try it again. That's another method you could imply. Or you use a mixture of all of these. Of course, inspired taming does always the trick, but that's no real tip or trick here. Beyond that, I don't really have much more to say about taming, but I found that a pretty useful way of getting the job done, especially if you want to have those really exotic critters. Just gun them down and try to tame them this way. Worked out surprisingly often in the time being. So, the next thing I want to talk about is the food situation for your animals. Generally said, every animal that's not sitting inside a pen has an easy way of getting fed. You just have to allow them access to somewhere where they can eat food that they are supposed to eat. Predators will just hunt stuff on the map and herbivores will just keep looking for stuff which is within their designated zone. About zones, I'll talk in a minute, a bit more in detail. So, when we are talking about pen animals, you see here, there's always this nice designator which shows you how much nutrition there is to be consumed. Mostly ignore that. I've made the experience that this is pretty much a false friend. My personal best results were with building little barns like this. And you see below this haystack is a small stockpile zone which has a critical priority and only accepts hay. Every production of hay will therefore be stored here first and then somewhere else after. Pretty nice way of storing the food that you want to have for your creatures inside the barn and convincing your pawns to do that without you breaking a sweat. The other way I like to do is pull out a certain crop as a food crop 
in this scenario, for example, potatoes. But if you're playing with uh, more crop mods, you can see a lot of different plants. And just say all potatoes are going to be stored inside here with an important priority. And all the excess is going to go into the freezer. Pretty good stuff because it really helps you to have your freezer full with stuff the animals can eat. And this will keep your livestock happy. A third and very inefficient method is to call out a growing zone inside your pen. This, uh, for example, is a vanilla compatible one. You just uh, call out hay grass uh, planting. Your animals will eat the immature plants. And that's actually a quite bad thing because they get way more nutrition out of that if they eat the complete plant. But Especially in the very early stages of a colony, when you only have like two or three dromedaries and the like, this can work out quite decently to just call out like a smaller patch like that and leave that inside the pen and let it grow there for, for special occasions. You can even exclude that out of your animal zone and let it grow there. There's a lot of methods. I don't like to use that though. This is a false friend because you can't really make sure that your pen animals won't eat the harvest but if you're really desperate to keep your animals fed not the worst way to do it better than starving animals so let's talk about organizing your animals a little bit so in this uh, section i want to talk about a couple of things tips and tricks that will help you to mitigate smaller or larger disasters so for one i want to start out whenever you set up a freezer make sure that you check out that the unfert that the fertilized eggs are forbidden inside there a lot of my setups have fertilized eggs as a standard yes for the freezer and that'll kill them off so if you want to breed them out make sure they don't accidentally go into the freezer before you have those eggs happened to me with one precious iron husk beetle egg ones made me really angry so that really helps a ton. The other thing is quite obvious. Set up a animal zone. You want one. Your animal zone should always be consisting out of something you allow everywhere. Simply set up by new area and invert. So it's allowing everything first. And then you can easily just uh, use the clear allowed areas tool and exclude certain areas always make sure that with your critters you don't allow them to enter your fields because they'll eat your crops while they are immature really bad stuff and pretty nasty also think twice if you want to allow your animals to enter the freezer or not they will eat the food of your colonists and without mods they'll also gobble down on the alcohol so therefore be careful and another thing exclude of course the apartments of your colonists from the animals because they'll leave a lot of filth in there and that'll be not making anybody happy when you grow larger livestock amounts make sure that you make good use of the auto slaughter menu has been only recently introduced in version 1.3 which allows you to basically set up maximum population amounts for certain for certain species and if you start breeding something like chicken and the like really really do yourself a favor and use this tool it's awesome because otherwise you'll be growing insane okay enough about that let's talk about fighting with your animals so first things first are clear to fight with your animal it has to be trained in guard and in attack to release it and it needs to be drafted when the master is drafted, so this check mark here, and you have to assign a master. I just want to cover the basics here real quick. There is, though, a pretty interesting case where you see this Rayhound is an advanced trainability animal, and he's coming from the Alpha Animals mod pack, in case you're wondering. And we have here this wonderful Iron Husk Beetle, which has an intermediate trainability, which means it is able to do combat. But as you see here, it's not exactly willing to leave its pen. And this is true for all pen animals with intermediate trainability. To fix this, you get on to your pen, you hold open the pen gate, 
you open it and as you see there the critter is immediately roaming out sadly of course the other critters are also immediately roaming out so if you want to have you to make this happen organized designate the pen for your battle animals one exclusively for battle animals and don't hold animals inside the pen which are roaming outside like that's what you're seeing here but after this is done you see now the uh, iron husk beetle is battle ready and you can now release it just like you would release it in every other scenario this is the only way that i found so far to make it work if you know other ways that are more convenient please let me know i've done quite a lot of trying until i came this far keep in mind one thing iron husk beetle can't open doors Rayhound can open doors if you have a larger fortification complex which needs you to traverse through doors to reach a certain point for combat stuff like these critters pen animals are dumb you need to hold open the doors for them otherwise they'll do some horrible pathing to try to get to their master okay enough about pen animals i know i have to talk a lot about that but they are so stupid that you need to talk a lot about them and let's talk about animal combat in general so with the animals if you are running vanilla all the animals are the same they are pretty good at melee but nothing else if you are running other mods like alpha animals and the like you'll get animals with different stats attached to them some of them can shoot and the like but i don't want to talk too much about that because that's too much modded content this video is supposed to be more vanilla compatible so my personal word of advice is simple use your animals wisely as blockers in melee situations i like to release my animals only in the very last moment before melee troops get into my face or i like to send them out into situations where i need to bind ranged attackers to make sure that you don't lose stuff that you're valuing make sure that you separate your combat animals roughly into two categories expendables and non-expendables so i love to have meat shields that i just send out into mecha mechanoid uh, attacks which breed fast and are no problem to replace this has been easier before version 1.3 nowadays it's a tad bit harder but a good example here is our friend the poodle advanced trainability decent move speed horrible combat stats though compared to real combat animals but you can breed them and you can vaguely train them and you can use them to trigger out the worst of the assault of let's say mechanoid clusters but also pirate raids with tons of rocket launchers send the poodles in they'll tank the rockets so your people don't have to that's one way to deal with those but don't make the mistake to mix your expendable animals with the non-expendable animals so examples for non-expendables would be your royal drumbo that you have trained or your mega sloth duo that's kicking ass whenever you are going into make sure that you use these only when you are sure that you won't make it without them or that they'll survive it for sure just that as a side note another thing that i want to give you as a tip in terms of combat there are animals that are really really useful in a way that you can put them into a zone every animal that's not supposed to be a pen animal and can be zoned somewhere you can use that to distract your enemies so for example if we put down one zone for let's use the this one let's invert that again so if we use this zone for example here Imagine this would be the only uh, op option for the enemy to get through, everything else would be fortified, and so on and so forth. If you just slap down a zone here and allocate, let's say, uh, a dozen muffalos, for example, there, what will happen is raiders will be distracted by these. This way you can use these zones as accumulators for critters that'll, that are just supposed to distract your enemies. You can use this with rats, boom rats, lopes, now you get the idea. 
I'll leave that to your own fantasy, but this is a pretty decent strategy where you can use this also as kind of an inner ring. Like, exa for example, we can also imagine that our kill box would be here, and if we ever get overwhelmed, we fall back behind here to another uh, archery range, and we'll let the enemies get distracted by these critters. Good stuff, saved my life a lot of times, and it doesn't even need much of an investment, because you can basically let those critters even live there. But these tricks have been a little bit nerfed with version 1.3, because a lot of creatures that were super good for this strategy nowadays need a pen, but nobody stops you from putting a pen between you and the raiders, so give, let's, to give you a final impression what I'm talking about, you can also put down something in your fallback zone, which will look like that. Believe me, the raiders won't be able to resist bashing this down on their way into your base. There have been nerfs to the raider behavior that they are not so hard favoring pen animals anymore, but if you put it down like that, Believe me, it'll do something. Alright, enough about that, let's talk about caravans and animals. So, for caravans in version 1.3, there is a new stat that I want to point out. It's called Caravan Riding Speed. And that's pretty awesome, because that means these animals will speed up your caravans. And you ought to check out which animals can do that by just uh, checking out their bio. And you'll be surprised how many animals are actually rideable these days. So you can't just uh, check out if they do this by searching for caravan speed. And this way you will see if they speed up your caravans or not. This has been added with version 1.3 and that's why I'm showcasing it. Because I bet a couple of people didn't realize that nowadays there are animals which actually make your caravan faster but only if they have this caravan riding speed trait. And there aren't too many, but if they have, they'll help you out a lot. And beyond that, animals are awesome for caravans because, you know, pack animals, I don't need to talk too much about them. Their usage is quite clear and you can really do a lot of heavy lifting with them. What's not so obvious is pan animals like the iron husk beetle there some of them ha have the intermediate trainability and the ability to carry something. Though they are rare, they are the perfect caravan animals because they can carry stuff. And if you ever get attacked on the road, you can use them as fighting, st uh, fighting critters as well. Beyond that, well, you can use also fighting animals very well as a caravan protection. And you can e also just uh, consider to train an entire pack for this regard, but I'll leave that to your own fantasy. So last chapter before we head on over to the mods is tips and tricks regarding trade with animals. Animals can be used to earn tons of money. So all the animals nowadays have a readout of what they produce. You have this animal productivity tab and check them out. They are really, really informative, but that's not that's the most obvious things. Let's head on over to the less obvious things. What I personally love to do is check out my neighbor's preferences. And if you check out what kind of creatures they'll buy, you'll sooner or later realize that your neighbors have certain friendships for stuff like really useless animals, like for example, iguanas or other easily breedable things. So check out the list, and if there's anything in your biome that you can easily breed, personal favorites are of course the more useful animals like alpacas or you get the idea, or even boomalopes. Practically every animal running around on your map regarding the uh, fertility of your biome can be transformed into money. And even check out if your neighbors are buying stuff like bunnies. Let's check them out. I have forgotten that bunnies are something that people like to buy. I don't think they were. So there's a couple of animals that are not tradable. Like you see, hares are not among them. Rats 
either, but I was very surprised how many animals are actually bought by your neighbors, even though they are virtually useless. My favorite example was the iguana. But also monkeys, they all have no real bigger use and lots of other critters and use that to your advantage because you can really earn a lot of money with that by just randomly taming critters and selling them to your neighbors. This also works perfectly to a lot of for a lot of caravans and trade ships. Beyond that, well, there's nothing there which I can talk about which ain't too obvious. You can use all these animals to gain a lot of money. Of course, the byproducts they yield are very, very valuable. And if you start refining them into clothing, you'll always get more. So if you have access to alpaca wool and the like, don't make the mistake to sell it off raw, If you, unless you really need to do, refine it. The better your crafters get, the, the larger the yield will grow. And believe me, Masterwork or even only only excellent quality items pay off a lot more money than the other way around. And beyond that, well, all the other livestock products can be sold as well, like eggs and the like. But, well, I think there is not much, not that much more to add in that regard. But you can easily grow rich by just selling animals as they are and i was very surprised about the margin that was possible by just catching stuff from the map and selling it off if you start breeding it it even grows more and more profitable okay so let's head on over to the last chapter of this video and we're going to talk about animal mods that i love and recommend so I'm going to start first off with content mods and then I'm going to talk about a quality of life mods. So with the content mods, the vanilla animals expanded sheet is awesome. They add in realistic animals that are just living on the planet Earth right now. And this really spices up the palette in so far that it's a little less boring to look at. Another really cool mod that I want to mention here is Dinosauria, which adds 32 species of dinosaurs right now. And it's really cool. First off, who doesn't love dinosaurs? And second off, it adds in a huge variety of very deadly and very useful dinosaurs. But beware, a couple of them are a tad bit broken in the, in the way that those dinosaurs are worth a lot of money very very much money and they scale up the enemy raids extremely therefore so this is something you really ought to be careful and besides that they are stupidly strong you'll get you'll add in the danger you, you'll amp up the danger rating of your runs if you play with that in the same venue goes megafauna which is for me just a uh, just a companion mod to dinosauria see intended um Megafauna adds in, well, those huge critters that were living between the dinosaur period and now. Like, uh, stuff like the, the Smilodon, saber-toothed tiger, but also huge titanic snakes, birds, and the like. And this is a really dangerous mod. Most of these critters will mess up your day and ruin your life. But, first off, I love challenges, and second off, they are all tameable. And believe me when I say that your own Smilodon breeding place is pretty cool once you're there. Next one, Magical Menagerie. I love that one. It's a fantasy mod. It adds in fantasy critters like manticores and uh, all manner of different fantastic creatures. And they are really well made. They are pretty strong though. Add in a lot of different uh, range attack versions. And if you love fantasy, I recommend it wholeheartedly. And last but not least, the almighty alpha animals mod. It's my favorite animals mod. It adds in a lot of creatures which are highly alien, which are totally adding in to the sci-fi vibe of the game, which I very much miss in the vanilla game. And they also add this also adds in a ton of really, really dangerous creatures. 
The first few times when you play with other animals, it'll mess your day up, and after a while you'll just love it, and you'll be never wanted to play without it, I guess. I don't know. I personally think it's one of the best uh, animal mods out there if you want to add in some alien and strange and interesting creatures that will make your life a lot more interesting okay so let's talk about the quality of life mods for animals that i personally love most so first and foremost animals logic animals logic is awesome it gives you so many nifty little things it stops animals from drinking alcohol it makes them easier manageable in terms of medical uh, treatments you get a alert when they are about to die and you also get a option to convert all those different meat sorts into one unified chicken meat so there's a lot of cool stuff in an animal's logic in one mod and i wholeheartedly recommend it the next one on the list is kill for me this is one that i say it's a little bit broken because it allows you to let your animals autonomously hunt stuff on the map without the beast master involved but i find it super cool you need to train the animals a lot there's a lot of work involved so i really gotta say cool stuff if you want to go for killer squads of animals one of my favorite mods so far predator hunt alert is a small one and it's really easily explained but it adds in so much Whenever a creature on the map decides to eat one of your colonists of one of your animals, you get a real warning. Not that stupidly way too late warning the vanilla game gives you when the, the predator is right in your face already. So, really I recommend that. Grazing lands, the animals don't destroy grass anymore and, well... That's one that I want to recommend if you want to make your life a lot easier with keeping your animals fed. I think it's too strong. I don't personally play with it, but I wanted to recommend it because it eases out a lot of things because Rimworld surely is one micromanagement grave, and if you don't like a certain type of micromanagement in the game, this is one mod that makes your life very easy, very simply. Oh crud, I forgot the a doc said when I wanted to talk about content mods. A doc said animal prosthetics. I don't need to explain much about that, but it adds in prosthetics for animals. Especially cool if you have those non-expendable animals where you which you just want to keep alive and just fresh them up when they are battle battered and also upgrades. Pretty cool stuff. Alright, next on the list, animal tab. Oh gosh, I forgot the uh, pet food as well. Dang. Well, animal tab. You saw the animal tab in action during this entire video. It's basically a better organized version of the regular animal tab, which has informative values of how much, how far the milk growth and wool growth and the like is already done. Filters, which allow you to manage real large amounts of animals where you can't just designate different groups. So your 60 chicken don't clutter your list always anymore pretty useful stuff can't recommend it enough it's been there since years and it's one of the most powerful things ever around here first released in alpha 12 or 11 <laughs> that's how good it is and last but not least well it's been a two content mods slipped through pet food plus nifty little one that i like to play with because you know kibble shouldn't be the only animal food and this is mostly fluff but if you want to add in a nice variety of meals for your critters this is one of the useful, most uh, lovely ones that I've found. So, that's that. The end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any additions, I'm pretty sure there are lots of additions. And feel free to leave your personal tips and tricks regarding animals. I feel like I have already forgotten a ton of things that I wanted to say. But for the sake of the length of the video, I guess it was okay. But... Share your knowledge, I'd be super down for that. Maybe I'll do a part two of this video one day when we have that many good th good thoughts there. Who knows? Leave me a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed, and of course consider subscribing. There's daily content, I do daily videos about gameplays, also try to do a tutorial daily, so there's really a lot of stuff happening on the channel. 
Also check out the description box more thoroughly. There's not only those timestamps I was talking about, also a Discord channel where I like to hang out and with other like-minded gamers. And of course, the Twitch channel of mine where I stream quite regularly. Last but not least, if you're still listening, that's pretty awesome. There's links for support for this video project. I'd be super happy if you checked them out. So have a wonderful day and see you soon.